in a next step, I'm interested in creating my own permission groups. And I like to do that because I like to support a scenario, for example, like to be only able to change first name, last name, and maybe the central account uh, of person objects, but only for a subset of data, for example, for the subset of people where the last name starts from A down to D. So to do so, I have to step into designer. And again, it makes no sense to create new groups. We saw that in the video before. In this specific situation, I will copy all of these basic groups because it's easier to start with something that works and later on just to strip down it a little bit instead of figuring out what I need to from the scratch build up such a new group. To do so, I use the copy wizard. Therefore, I step to permission groups. Here we are, copy permission groups. It is a wizard. It, I have to select the group, VI person user interface. That is the first one. It automatically generates a name that says CCC and the same, it's this, uh, and the rest, it's the same. Um, that is good. CCC stands for, uh, this is a custom object. So next, I want to copy the permissions. I want to copy the navigation information. I'm not interested in the system users. So this is my first copy and it's successful. And the same thing I will do with the others as well. That one. And next, and the whole thing gets copied and done. So once these groups are copied, I can find them here. And as you can see, they completely lost their connection. That is good, especially because these are new objects for the system. So I have just to connect them together. To do so, the order was basic information. That was the first one then the edit rights, that is the second run, and then the user interface and viewing permissions, which is the last one. To get that connected, I just select the end of the first group and just drag and drop here that line on the next. Now it's connected and the same for that one. Uh, for all the people who are just wondering how they can get rid of these connections, uh, that is a little bit special. You cannot just select it and try to delete it or something else, but you can just try to connect it again, and that will automatically disconnect these, ty uh, these type of things. So connect and disconnect, and because we want to connect, connect. So this is here then at the end such a specific group. I check now here front, and I unselect the original one for my test user. Remember, we are working on the test user that we selected uh, before. And with that, I can just commit to the database, this time a lot of stuff to get stored. And once it is connected, I can easily test it. I step to my manager, I step into a new connection, I enter my password, here we are, and I connect to the database and I get my person dialog, hopefully, here it is. And if I just select one of these person objects and step into the NASA data page, as you can see, all the fields are writable, so I can enter here code if I like to do so, or values. And that is at the end, the permission copied from the standard permission. First step. Second step now is to strip that down. Remember what we want to do. We want to only to make it available, that first name and last name could be modified, and maybe here as well, the central account on the miscellaneous tab. All other properties have to disappear. This is what I like to do with it in that specific session. To do so, I'm going back to my permission model. And this time I have to change my permission groups. What permission groups I will have to change? I assume that the edit rights and the viewing and display rights are the rights I have to change. So let's try it. I close here my system user. I just refresh the view of the tree, here we are. I go to my edit rights for person objects and being there, I start the permission editor, here we are. In the permission editor, I'm going down to the person object. As you can see, here are many permissions set. The reason for is the person object, it's very connected to a lot of other objects in the complete database. And all of these objects, if they are connected, needs display names to be displayed. For example, if there's a department assigned to my person object, I like to see the department name in, the, in that specific field 
which is responsible for the connection. Without that, I can see there is an object connected, but I'm not able to say which object is connected if I have no permissions. That is the reason why I see here so many, many permissions. So I don't go down to the person object. Here we are. And what I like to do is I like to allow everything on the table level. That is good. But I only want to make the three properties available we are talking about. And the three properties are the, the last name, the first name and the central account. So let's do that. I just select the first set. I click here on the checkboxes. They disappear. I let the central account like it is. I go down to the first name and I have to be a little bit careful so that if I select something. I hit the boxes. Here we are. And I do the same down to the last name and I do the same for all the other properties in the person object. I don't touch properties in other tables right now because if I try to do so, it could be that I'm in trouble with other objects. To be honest, um, for our scenario that will work, but if you want to make it uh, waterproofed, then it is important that you figure with a try and error route uh, that you only take the permissions you really like. So my first change, person edit rights. I know there are viewing permissions as well and they are part of the display rights. And so I take that one here as well. Step into that specific editor and this time I do exactly the same. You can see it here. Just unselect the display rights from the last name up to the first name and up to the central account. I hold, by the way, the shift key. If I click here, that is standard windows. We don't do that, something different. Here we are. And hopefully now the whole thing works. I just commit to the database. Here we are. And with that, I really hope that the whole thing here will now exactly do what it should do. And that means I see only three columns if I now sign in. Manager, new connection, test system user. Here are my employees. I just select one of these employees and I jump in there and I get here, as you can see directly, a permission that says the viewing permission denied for the value certification status. I'm not quite sure exactly why I need that certification status right now, but this is good because that is exactly what I have configured. So if I go out there and I look into these different tabs, then you can see the central account. You can see here the first and the last name. Organizations is empty, address is empty, user defined and custom is empty as well. The only message is certification status did not work, which is uh, not that good. So what I try now to do is to activate just the viewing permissions for the, uh, for the certification status. We search for the certification status. It's a little bit hard to find, especially because I can see technical names here, but maybe I'm able to switch to friendly display names as well. And here we are. And opening just the employees for that specific thing. I'm searching for the certification status. I set the flag. I just commit to the database. So let me just sign in. And doing so without any problems, I can just open that specific thing. You see the certification status is displayed. I cannot live without it because I get an error message. The reason it, it's not quite clear. That is something um, that have to be investigated in a, pro in a project, but all the others are not there. And I can now, for example, live with that specific dialogue. That is the way to work with these things. Yes, of course, you can more strip down if you like to, but what you have to avoid are error messages at the end for the users. And that is what we saw, I think, impressive enough how to do it.